discussed in Soul Cyber and something I'm very interested in seeing, why you don't want your website to be inspired at all by that of Apple. Then give it up for him here at Ignite, Denver 16. I'm Justin Solsheimer, website designer here in Denver, Colorado since 06. And again, I want to talk to you why Apple.com shouldn't be your website inspiration for your next redesign. <clears throat> uh, talking to every client, they always kind of give me the same criteria they want for their next website. They all say clean, they all say simple, they all say modern, same buzzwords every time. And inevitably, when we're asking for websites they like, they all say Apple.com. Oh, we want to look just like Apple. Well, Apple's doing everything right. But why is Apple.com so popular? I don't really think it has much to do with the website itself, but let's take a look at it anyway. Let's do that. All right. <laughs> Here's a, a, a screenshot of the current site. It's, you know, it's everything the client wants. It's clean, it's simple, it's modern. Uh, it's got a very polished look and feel. You can see why they like it. Uh, it has sort of that premier feel, but it's got some usability issues too highlighted, a really small branding area, not a lot of copy to kind of explain what your website's for, and there's not really a clear call to action to tell your user what to do next. Apple can get away with it because they've already hammered you over the head about what they do. <laughs> they make really beautiful products, they have really slick software, and there's already a global fan base of everything they do. No matter what website they were going to put out, people were going to already say it's fantastic. The problem with copying just the website, though, is that it's just a little piece of the Apple brand. Your client is most likely after the brand itself, the whole Apple ecosystem. Uh, just by copying the website without the products and the software and the rapid fan base isn't going to do a lot. <laughs> so this is your client who says, I want Apple.com. It's a very small business, probably not a real big budget. So you agree. You say, all right. Cecil, let's update your website. <laughs> Cecil probably hasn't updated this website in 20 years, and it's time for an update. You try to talk him out of Apple, but he's, a, he's on a budget, so you work with him. You throw together a quick template for him to use. It's basically the same site. You've taken out anything that's specific to Apple and sort of given it to him to upload his new products and enjoy his new clean, simple, modern website. It's not long till it ends up looking like this, though. <laughs> Again, without all those other pieces that Apple has, you can't just get that polished look just by copying the framework of the site. <laughs> Apple spent in 2013 $1 billion on marketing, which is just insane. The average small business a year only spends $4,800. That's a big reason why your Apple site isn't going to look like Apple when you put it together. Well, let's say Cecil says, all right, let's spend some money on photography, let's rewrite the copy, let's totally rebrand ourselves, I'm in. So you relaunch the iPod-inspired site with something more like this. And, and it's basically pretty good. It's clean, it's simple, it's modern. The only problem with lifting the, the look and feel from Apple is that we've taken all the problems with it too. We still have a tiny branding area. We still have a glass reflected nav bar. And, and not only that, but now we're one of a million other sites all trying to do the same thing. Uh, you'll see it time and time again online, other sites that are looking just a little too similar to Apple's website. When Apple moves on from that look, you'll be stuck. There are some things we can take from the Apple site though that can work for you. If we sort of break down the site and just do its basic structure and use that as your inspiration, rather than look and feel, you'll come out with something a lot more solid. Here's a real simple wireframe, which is just a part of the design process. Uh, take the pieces apart, sketch it out, and give your user something that works but doesn't necessarily look like Apple. Based on this, I would uh, then present a redesign that's a lot cleaner, very simple, very modern still, but looks nothing like Apple's website. You'll see that uh, we kept sort of that polished look and feel without stealing the look and feel. Uh, not only that, we've made a few usability improvements too. Uh, a bigger branding area, redesigned nav, restyled the product photography, 
and then add a very clear call to action. So hopefully this you know, convinces your client that you can not only have that clean, simple, modern look of Apple, but you can do better. Thank you.